Hello, my name is Jeremy. This is a rare recording. And uh, today I want to go over something that a lot of people have been asking about, and that is how do you get samples onto the OP1? How do you do it? How does it work? Do, do you just put a sample on it? I don't know. Thanks for watching. A lot of people have been asking about this, especially in context of the Samplified Lo-Fi and Chill Pack that I used in uh, the last video. So I want to show you how to do that. So we're going to be using Ableton and the OP1 drum utility to process some samples and get them over to the OP1 in ways that we can use them. The first thing that you have to keep in mind is that the OP1 uses AIFF files at 441 16-bit. 441 is your sample rate, 16-bit is your bit rate, and mono is what you're looking for. So whatever we end up doing, we're gonna end up putting them in that format to uh, get them over to the OP1. Okay, so let's get started. Usually when I'm making a track, I don't really worry about tempo. I just pull a bunch of stuff over and make it work. But for the Samplify tutorial, I knew I wanted to work at a specific tempo because I had loops that I wanted to use at that tempo. So I used Ableton to process them in terms of tempo, sliced them up and then brought them over to the OP1. So I'm just gonna walk through that really, really quick. Okay, so I have the sample pack here. Um, I'm gonna grab, let's see, a drum loop. Okay, so now we have a drum loop. You can bring drum loops of any tempo, you can bring loops of any tempo into Ableton and they will conform to the project tempo, which in this case is 95, which is the project tempo I had for uh, Tenalus, which was the last OP1 track. So at this point, this drum loop while in Ableton is conformed to 95 BPM, my working tempo. I need to make sure that this uh, sample remains at that tempo when I bring it out to the OP1. So what I'm gonna do is hit Control J to in Ableton consolidate that. And I've just made a copy of this sample. After we're done with this, I will go grab those samples and we'll take them to the next step. Remember, we need to get them into mono AIFF files. Okay, so let's grab some other samples. Uh, how about some, um, some melodic samples? Let's see. Okay, so for this sample, what I wanted to do was chop it up in ways that I could put it in the OP1 drum utility and create a kit out of it and play that kit back using the different phrases of this thing. So I wanted to identify the different phrases that I had and slice it, then consolidate it, and then use those samples as part of a drum kit in the OP1. So let's take a listen real quick. So I identified that as the first part of the phrase. Um, I'm gonna make a slice of that. I'm gonna consolidate that. And this is gonna be the second part of the phrase. There was another line that I'm gonna do the same thing to. So we're going to cut, consolidate. Let's make another cut there just for fun. Consolidate, consolidate. Okay, uh, let me introduce you to the OP1 drum utility. Um, this is something that was put out by Steve Duda of X for Records, um, a Dead Mouse uh, collaborator. And uh, this came out years and years ago when the OP1 first came out. And this is the uh, easiest way to get uh, create drum kits or melodic kits if you want for your OP1. There is a 32-bit plugin, a VST plugin for Windows. There is a at least 32-bit, there may be a 64-bit plugin for um, Mac. And more importantly for Mac, there's a standalone version, which is really, really, really convenient. And if you're on a Mac, then you can just load this up and drop whatever samples you want into it, and uh, they will be happy. Um, remember that we uh, do need to work at 44116 16-bit AIFFs. We're going to put this over here. Uh, by the way, I'm using JBridge to uh, bridge this 32-bit uh, this plugin into my 64-bit instance of Ableton. Uh, this is a reference that is on the OP1 site uh, for this utility, and uh, it shows their sort of layout for how they suggest that you build kits in here. And if you go and you listen to the OP1 stock kits, the ones that come with the OP1, you'll notice that it follows this, uh, this pattern um, with Kick, kick alternative, snare, snare alternative, rim shot, hand clap, tambourine, some blank ones, all these number ones, you just do whatever the hell you want. Closed hat, open hi hat, ride hat, ride hat, ride cymbal, crash cymbal, <laughs> and some bass sounds up here. If you build your kits like this, and then in the OP1, if you're switching around between uh, the stock kits and your kits with, uh, with a sequence, you'll actually have them kind of match up uh, in 
maybe uh, intention and, and you'll get some fun surprises now and then. So I don't know, just suggest you build like this. You don't have to, not a big deal. Um, so we're going to build a kit real quick. I'm going to go over to my lo-fi and chill uh, thing again and grab some drums and percussion. So let's go ahead. That's not a bad kit. I'm going to drop that kick in there. There's an okay kick right there. And you can see I'm just dragging and dropping into these cells and they, uh, they stay. You can click on them and they'll play back. Sound like a rim shot. Kind of like that. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you can hear this, but uh, when I auditioned this in uh, Ableton, it's stereo. Very much mono here. So this is going to convert the files, if it can, to, uh, to mono. Okay, so um, I've gotten about halfway through the keyboard here building stuff up. And uh, you'll notice that I have this red message down here saying uh, total duration seconds, 12.80. Uh, uh, the limit of duration of samples you can put in this is 12 seconds. So if I got rid of one of these hi-hats, I would drop back down to a not red warning 8.80. So when you're building your kits, you may encounter uh, that you have some samples that are too long. And what I recommend there is to go into your audio editor of choice, cut off uh, unnecessary tails from the sample. Um, for instance, this closed hi-hat has about half a second of information, but for some reason it's four seconds long. We don't know why. It's a mystery for Mulder and Scully to figure out. Um, but let's pretend that I had finished making this kit and all this stuff was populated. I would then hit this uh, export AIFF for OP1. AIFFFFF. And uh, I would save it someplace that I wanted to save it. Let's say uh, test kit. All right. So on my desktop now is this test kit. And the cool thing about the drum sets for OP1 uh, when made in this manner is that you will hear. There's all the samples that I added, all these samples here. It basically just creates a, uh, an AIF with slice points for all of these things. And uh, that's what the OP1 is gonna read. Now, this utility has some other functions that you may find useful, especially if you want to create uh, chromatic patches. And uh, that's in these modes here. You can change the pitch of each one using this slider. You can change the play mode. The arrow pointing forward with the, uh, with the line afterwards means that it's going to play the sample all the way through every time it's hit, regardless of note length or anything like that. Uh, this mode over to the left, where it's just a uh, arrow pointing forward with no line, means that it will only play the sample for the duration of the key being pressed down. So this is actually useful if you have things like a long white noise hi-hat or something like that. Or the uh, the melodic sample, the music box sample that we had earlier, I used this mode to uh, have it stop playing when I released the key and I was able to create some cool rhythmic uh, elements with that. And then finally loop over here on the right, which will uh, loop the sound. And in the OP1, you can actually set the duration of that loop and uh, change the way that that whole thing behaves. This is uh, to reverse or uh, play the sample forward. So very useful for all kinds of stuff. And then over here you have volume, uh, negative infinite to uh, plus 12. All right, so we've made a kit, fantastic. You can do this with um, any kinds of samples as long as they uh, are accepted by this utility. And as long as you do not go over uh, 12 seconds. So that's how you make a kit in the OP1. And we'll show you how to put that over to the OP1 in a second. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go grab these samples here that we made and we're going to convert them to uh, AFF files and we're going to get them over to the OP1. So let's do that now. All right, so uh, I'm gonna be using SoundForge to turn this stereo, uh, 44.1, 24-bit stereo WAV file into um, a mono AFF file at 44.1, 16-bit. Um, whatever audio editor you choose to use, you could use Audacity, free, great. Uh, and it will have a sample converter in it. You will just need to Google how your particular audio editor works. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, change my bit depth to 16. Fantastic. And then I'm going to process this to mono by saving it as such. All 
All right, so we successfully conformed our uh, samples to a tempo. We've sliced them up. We made a kit. We turned everything into mono 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz AIFF files, and now we're going to get these onto the OP1. So let's do that thing now. Okay, so here's the OP1. We want to put it into disk mode so that it appears on our computer as a disk drive, and we can drag our samples into the appropriate folder. So we're going to put it into disk mode by hitting Shift plus Com, and then hitting Disk. In a second, this is going to pop up on my desktop as a drive that we can drag samples into. And uh, what you get is the OP1 shows up here as a drive. Uh, drum and synth are the drum kits and uh, synth, which also includes the sampler as well. So two places we can put samples in here. Kits, like we made with the OP1 drum utility, are going to go into drum. Anything that you want the OP1 sampler synth engine to play with, you're going to put into synth. So we're going to go to drum, we're going to make a new folder, and you can make a bunch of folders on the OP1's uh, hard drive if you want. Uh, I make some for drum loops, I make some for drum kits, it all depends on what I'm doing. We're going to call this kits, we're going to drag that test kit over, I'm going to go back to synth, I'm going to make a new folder called custom, doesn't matter, you can call it whatever you want, and I'm going to drag those two AFF files. I'm also going to go over to my repository of OP1 stuff and drag some stuff over for the sampler. I have a bunch of stuff. So these are going to be more um, like instrument instruments. I got some Rhodes, I have flute, organ, just a bunch of stuff that I've collected from various places. And I'm just going to drag these into this as well. So the OP1's synth sampler engine will have access to these uh, for me to play once I uh, am playing on the OP1. Let's go over to the OP1 now and take a look at what has happened. Okay, so we've dragged our samples into our appropriate folder on the OP1 drive that was mounted on our computer, and now we're going to take it out of disk mode and we're going to see what we have on the OP1. So you can do that just by hitting the OP1 button right here. Now you're going to see that it's going through and telling you which synth patches or sampler patches are being added, which drum kits are being added. Uh, if the tape had been erased or changed, you'd be rebuilding the tape, the album. This is where it gives you a little readout of what's going on. This will also tell you if any of the samples that you've tried to load on here are failing, either due to being the incorrect type or uh, because you have too many things that you're trying to put on. There is a limit to the amount of samples and presets that you can have on the OP-1, and I will probably put on screen right now what that limit is, because I don't know off the top of my head. Is it there? Is it there yet? Okay, great. Okay, so we got our samples over here. We're going to find that custom folder of samples in the sample engine that we made, and just give them a quick listen to see uh, what it did. Anything that you can turn into a mono AFF 14, 16 bit sample, you could put in the OP1. Don't let your dreams be dreams, just make 441 16 bit AFF mono sample. Put in the OP1. Okay, let's check out the drums. We only filled half of it, so all of these are going to be that last sample. But there it is. There's the kit. Cool thing about this, if you have a drum loop that you have converted into the right format, like an old-timey drum loop, any kind of cool amen break, something like that, if you bring it in here, it will auto-slice it. I don't know when they added that feature, but it seems to work. Every single drum loop I brought in has been sliced uh, on major transients. Uh, across the uh, the keyboard, either transients or, or loop divisions, not really sure, but it seems to auto slice it. So don't worry about slicing your drum loops in uh, your DAW unless you really, really want specific slices because the OP1 will do it for you. And don't forget that while you're in here, you can always use the knobs to change where each 
sample begins and ends. If that's your thing. Okay, so that is how you get samples onto the OP-1. I will add a little bonus here. Uh, when I'm done with recording on the OP-1, when I want to like take it into Ableton or just finish whatever I'm doing, when I'm finished on the OP-1 with that particular track, I bring it back using the disc mode and I grab everything, everything, album, drum, synth and tape, and I just back it up somewhere. Just make a folder, OP-1 source uh, for your music project. I don't know, however you like to make folders. I just grab all of it. And that way, if I ever need to come back to this project for any reason, I have the presets, all the snapshots, everything that I did um, is right here uh, for the most part. Very good way to back up your OP-1 sessions. And, uh, you know, dig through them now and then. You might find presets or samples that you made that you forgot about. OP-1 sample tutorial. I hope you found this informative. And uh, if you have any more questions about how any of this works, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer. And I'll leave a link to the sti uh, the drum utility and uh, other pertinent things in the video description. So thank you for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. Goodbye.